Hello, GED students. I had a student, Mary, on Facebook send me a few problems from the advanced level practice of the order of operations on the GED math crash course. So that being said, just to let you know, as often happens on the advanced level practice, this is actually a little beyond the level of what you'll see on the GED. So as always, if you're working on experience level practice and feeling pretty good. You get to the advanced and you get stuck. Don't beat yourself up. Um, <laughs> advanced is often meant for students who are moving on to college and need to go even more uh, challenging than what the GED offers. So that being said, though, I will do this for you. There are two things that do appear very commonly in the non-calculator section of the GED in these problems. Exponents. They really do like exponents in the non-calculator section and absolute value. They like absolute value as well. But you usually don't see both in the same problem along with order of operations. That's just a higher level of complexity. Um, but all three of those things do appear. So we're kind of like practicing for three, three things at once with these fairly, fairly challenging problems. Let's take a look. So the first one she had a question with was number 17, which says the opposite, and that's how I read it. You can also say negative. It's not like you're wrong if you say negative, but the opposite of the absolute value of five cubed minus three to the fifth power. Okay. Our first goal is to simplify this sucker. And as we're simplifying, anytime we have more than one thing to do in an expression we're simplifying, we can refer to that lovely order of operations. So groupings first. We can see right here in the absolute, that's my dog's collar, you guys. He doesn't know when to be quiet. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> right here in the absolute value bars, we have a grouping, okay, five cubed minus three to the fifth power has been grouped, but there's still more than one thing going on here. We have exponents going on, so you better know that the next thing to do are exponents. We don't have a multiplication division in there, but we do have addition subtraction. So according to the order of operations, we're supposed to do any exponents, those little floating numbers, uh, before we do any addition or subtraction. So let's go ahead and handle our exponents. So I am going to do 5 to the 3rd power and 3 to the 5th power before I touch that subtraction. So 5 to the 3rd power means the same as repeatedly multiplying 5, multiplying 5 three times. So 5 times 5, of course, is 25. And if I were to multiply that by 5 again, I'd get 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. Okay. Now, I won't do my subtraction until after my exponents are done, so I'll just leave that there. Okay, But 3 to the 5th power is another exponent. So what does 3 to the 5th power mean? Well, it means 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. 3 multiplying by itself 5 times. 3 times 3 is 9. I can do that again. I get another 9. I'll drop down what I haven't used yet. 9 times 9 is 81. And to multiply that by 3... Um, you can do it in side work if you need to. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 8 is 24. And I do get 243. So right under 3 to the 5th power, right? 243. And I drop down whatever I haven't used. I haven't used the absolute value bars yet. I haven't uh, used that opposite or negation out front yet. All right. So I still have something to do in that grouping. I need to deal with the 125 minus 243, okay? So uh, I have $125. I want to take away or spend 243. Obviously, I'm spending more than I have. I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. I do need to subtract this, but I'm going to go ahead and put the 243 up on top if I'm going to do this by hand. And from that, I'm going to subtract 125. Now, if you have absolutely no... Um, experience with adding, subtracting negative numbers. I'm not going to get into that in this video. Again, um, it's not that big of a deal for the GED. You, with most problems, you can do it on the calculator. But I just will say when you're doing this by hand, you want the number that seems to be bigger up on top, that 243, in order for our subtraction algorithm to work. All right. And let's see, what do I get? 8, 1, 118. So that's 118, but I took away more than I had, so it's negative 118. Drop my absolute value bars, drop my negative. 
Now, careful. A lot of students just want to throw that negative symbol in there. You cannot do that. Um, according to the order of operations, um, we are... Ooh, this kind of falls outside of the realm of order of operations, so I better tell you. Okay, so here's what you need to know. You're going to do absolute value bars at the same time you do exponents. So when you do exponents and radicals, do absolute value bars then, then as well. Okay, so we are going to do this now. We're going to take the absolute value of uh, negative 118. You can't just throw things into absolute value bars. Okay, <laughs> so I'll deal with that first. So the absolute value of negative 118... All absolute value bars do is make their insides positive. And so what I get out of that is positive 118. And so it might seem like I'm done, but careful. There is still that negative that was out front, this guy that I haven't dealt with yet. Anything that you haven't dealt with yet drops down. And a lot of students would say to me, but Kate, it aren't absolute value, value bars supposed to turn everything positive? Well, yeah, they turn their insides positive. But this negative was outside of the absolute value bars. It was outside of the action. It has not been affected. It's still there. And so my final answer is negative 118. All right. Oof, fierce. Let's look at the next one. Okay. So negative 2 to the fourth power minus 2 times the absolute value of 3 minus 5. See how this 2 is shoved against the absolute value bars. Uh, when things are just shoved together with nothing in between them, they are multiplying. So that's what's happening there. All right. So once again, we need to deal with any groupings first. And once again, I see a grouping inside an absolute value bar. So let's do that. Three minus five. I have only $3. I spend five. Now I'm at negative two. I'm going to drop down anything I haven't used yet. Haven't used my absolute value. Haven't dealt with that minus two. Haven't dealt with that negative two to the fourth power. Lovely. Next thing I'm supposed to do is exponents, which as we said, are the little floating numbers. The radicals, don't see any of those in this problem, but we will do absolute values at this point as well. And I see a couple of things like that. I see this absolute value of negative two. I can do that now. And I see the two to the fourth power. Look at me, look how carefully I just box the two to the fourth power without the negative out front. Negatives out front, negation is an act of multiplication. So I actually am gonna deal with that after I deal with the exponents, okay? So two to the fourth power is the same as two times two times two times two. Of course, two times two is four and four again. And so I get 16. Drop the negative, drop the minus two. And then the absolute value of negative two, of course, is just positive two. We said absolute value turns everything positive. But interesting question, what's happening between these two, two numbers? It's not 22. What is it? Well, remember we said when two things were shoved together with nothing between them, they were multiplying. So I'm just going to use a parenthesis here to make sure that it's clear that I'm multiplying here. Great. Now I finished my exponents and absolute values. Now I'll move on to my multiplication division. Okay, I see some multiplication right here. And when I'm multiplying, I don't read that as minus two, I read that as negative two. So negative two times two is negative four. And of course I have not yet dealt with my negative 16, it'll drop. And now finally my very last step is any addition subtraction. And I see that here, I'm doing negative 16 minus four. So you guys, I'm already $16 in the hole. That's what negative 16 means. And I'm gonna spend another $4. So I'm going down another four. So a lot of students would try to do subtraction in their side work, but that's not going to work because that'll give you 12. And I'm already at negative 16 and I'm going down more. Think about this. Negative 16, negative 17, negative 18, negative 19, negative 20. I'm really in debt now. All right. So that is my final answer there. Negative 20. Again, again, I cannot say this enough. Beyond the scope of the GED to put this many things together it makes it for very good advanced level practice for students who've been working on order of operations for a while, who are college bound, who want to practice everything they're going to see on the GED, like um, absolute values, negative numbers, exponents, order of operations all at one time. But it is not the majority of what's on the test. So if this is feeling really challenging to you. I want you to just wipe your brow, move on. Don't worry about it. You do not have to be able to do order of operations at this level in order to pass your test. 
All right. Um, if you have any questions about this or any other GED math topic, be sure to drop it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it.